Lucifer is a show which proved that you never know when success is going to happen. No one expected that Lucifer, a show with a bored devil who has a nightclub in LA, would have the success it achieved. But the amazing plot spiced up with a more amazing cast, and of course, the thing we most enjoy, the appearance of Tom Ellis, the actor who plays the show's character Lucifer Morningstar, is what made people watch the show repeatedly. Since everyone watches the show, and Lucifer enjoys far more freedom on Netflix than it did on Fox, let's take a look at some things only adults notice, from dirty jokes to hidden details that will blow your mind. Keep watching to see a side of Lucifer that you weren't aware of. And number 8. The Very Beginning Lucifer's pilot is filled with enthusiasm, with an eye-catching premise, a great lead, and remarkable Neil Gaiman comic book origins. We all remember when Tom Ellis' Lucifer Morningstar cruised through the midnight LA streets in the show's opening scene. The devil's rock and roll blasting from his sports car was something that perfectly showed what kind of character Lucifer actually is. When the devil walks the earth, millions of things are crossing your mind. Why is he there? What does he want? And Lucifer has found a way to present to the viewers that he is certainly no saint. He always knows what satisfies him, and he doesn't stop until he gets the thing he wants. However, at the very beginning of the show, in the first episode, when Lucifer got pulled over in the opening minutes, the police officer asked Lucifer, you know why I pulled you over? To which Lucifer replies, well, obviously you felt the need to exercise your limited powers and punish me for ignoring the speed limit. He then adds, it's okay. I understand. I like to punish people too. Or at least, I used to. So here, he perfectly explains his character. Number 7. All the Nakedness There is plenty of nudity in Season and Lucifer, especially some short shots of Tom Ellis' behind. And when it comes to violence, the show takes complete use of the freedom Netflix gives to it. Both can be used in ways that provide the show with an interesting exploration of its topics. So what about those shots of Tom Ellis? What about those particularly extreme scenes? Do you guys remember when Lucifer played the piano naked, with what many fans claiming that he smokes a joint? Well, that scene also sums up the character of our handsome devil perfectly. Number 6. Hedonistic Lifestyle In Season 4, there are so many things which are hard to notice. One example is in the episode Orgy Pants to Work which is directed by Louise Milito. In this episode, the theme is describing a hedonistic lifestyle using scantily clad people, a kind of improper device, and some wrong stuff to give fans a glimpse at what a hedonistic lifestyle looks like, with the devil himself included. This is only noticed by adult fans of Lucifer, and the episode shows just how Lucifer is at that period, which is a significant development in his story. In that same episode though, Lucifer appears at a crime scene wearing his orgy pants, which is a pair of bottomless pants. At the moment, he doesn't have any significant meaning, but it does later when coupled with a scene on set in a nudist colony. All the special parts of the colony's residence, as well as Lucifer and Ella's, are covered in artistic ways, but not when it comes to their backsides. Number 5. O Ye of Little Faith Father as we previously stated, nudity is not an easy subject to pass on film or television. The line between interesting and unnecessary is often thin, and the same case goes with violence. But of course, violence is a different subject. What's interesting is that graphic violence is almost more tolerable than nudity. A single scene that highlights graphic violence in Lucifer happens in the episode of O oh Ye of Little Faith Father, which is directed by Jessica Borsaki, and it happens near the end of the episode when Lucifer faces the counselor turned serial killer, Oscar. Angered by hatred for his past dependents and concern for the characters in the dark nesses, swings his own head onto the sharp end of a broken chair leg, ending his life. In some way, this is necessary to happen as it puts importance on the fear other people appear to feel. It's a demonstration of the things people are ready to do to run from Lucifer and the evil that follows him. It also helped to develop the audience's view of Father Kinley and his character in particular, 
as he was capable to cause death without being in the room. Number 4. Yoga Girl Linda is a perfectly written character. Her portrayal is always on spot in every scene and story. The conclusions she has throughout the sessions with Lucifer are accurate, make sense, and she is suitable and relatable person in actual life. Now, we all remember when Linda and Lucifer met, and she mentioned that she does hot yoga. In the scene, we can see Chloe asking Lucifer, are you seriously talking about having sex with her right now? To which Lucifer replies, well, it won't take long. And then there's Linda saying, I do yoga, hot yoga. I'm freakishly flexible. Wanna see? Well, that was smooth. Also, let's give an appreciation to all those innocent souls that have no idea why is Linda mentioning yoga in this scene. Hot yoga. I'm freakishly flexible. Wanna see? <gasps> Number three. Attention to detail. Through Lucifer's promotion campaign leading up to its original 2016 airing, there was quite a piece of reaction. The religious community condemned the show for its depiction of their most famous biblical villain, and Christians claimed that the show mischaracterized the devil and ridiculed their ideas. You might not know, but there was even a potential spring to cancel the show by the group One Million Moms, and according to the Daily Express, they gathered over 38,000 signatures before the show aired. Of course, that didn't stop the show, and even after its start, some people didn't give up. For instance, there was another petition spring to remove Lucifer again, this time with over 100,000 signatures. The main protestation the religious community appears to have with the show is the description of Lucifer as a good guy. Let us know, what do you think about this in the comments? Now let's go on with how Lucifer appears unusually sexy in Season 3, Episode 4 of Fox's Lucifer Begins. He is in bed with a beautiful blonde who shares her deepest fantasy, which is to have sex in a ball pit at Chuck E. Cheese. Now, obviously, this is something only adults understand and probably not suitable for children so maybe the best thing would be to keep them away from this show. However, this beautiful blonde later freaks out as her husband comes home early, but Lucifer takes care of it. Of course, with his crazy ideas in this scene, he confronts the husband and acknowledges sexual encounters with his wife. In the end, however, he apologizes, since he finds out that her husband is a judge. Yet another thing that appeared throughout the show that has left the audience speechless was when Lucifer taught a group of teen delinquents how to sell weed. Oh, come on. Don't get high on your own supply. Don't, Don't get, get high on your own supply. Number two, not how things work. Lucifer was originally intended to end with season five, but after Netflix signed new contracts with series star Tom Ellis and showrunners Joe Henderson and Idly Modravic, the series was resumed for one last season. Fans have been expecting the new episodes ever since season four ended in May 2019, with Chloe, Laura German, showing her love for Lucifer while he was confronted with a choice of returning to reside over hell. Now that season five is finally here, we're more than happy to binge watch it. But let's go back to when Lucifer found a joint and started smoking it at the crime scene with Chloe. If we ever look for a scene that perfectly sums up who Lucifer is, we're definitely choosing this one. You brought pot to a crime scene? I certainly did not. I found it here. You found it. You found it here at a crime scene. Yes. Number one, the biggest thing I've ever seen. We never expected that Lucifer, a quite famous network television, would be dedicated mostly to jokes and talks about meter long King Kong doing and itching butts. But in the end, it's Lucifer. So we have to get used to it. This subject could be easily noticed in an episode of that type of the show, where we can also see an exceptional character exploration about self-worth and identity. It's of course, in Lucifer's way, quickly making something out of nothing. The early moments of the one with the baby carrot feature a joke that is only understandable by adults. Later, there's this line that says, that's the biggest cock Lucifer's ever seen. Then the micro penis enters the episode and there's a sentence we never thought we'd write. 
and this perfectly shows that the co-showrunner, Joe Henderson, made this episode using this kind of humor to the full potential. And here's one extra honorable mention. We all know that Lucifer might have chosen whom he fancied between Chloe and Eve for his love interest. And we got to admit that we love Eve since one of her best features is how honest she is. Eve told the truth about the apple of Eden and the forbidden fruit was never an apple. It was in fact, it was a fruit that resembled a banana. And there could have been some suggestions going on there. We end our video here guys. Is there anything we've missed? Let us know in the comment section below. Make sure you like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more amazing videos such as this. Thanks for watching.